make this one. All right, welcome to Steampunk and Gaming. My name is Daniel Burrow. I'll be your host today. I am the owner slash director slash fearless leader slash war chief of Craft Monocle Gaming. We produce Tefra, the steampunk role-playing game, available today um, over there in the gaming room. You have to follow the signs and weasel around up until you get to the elevators. Once you've hit the elevators, keep on going and eventually you'll hit the gaming room. They don't like us, so they put us in the corner. <laughs> Alex doesn't like us, he puts us in the corner. Or, alternatively, Alex likes us a lot, so he puts us next to Con Ops. Okay, new game for us to try. You never put me in the corner. I just know you guys are trouble, so I want to keep watching you guys. That's what it is. It's fair. <laughs> Everyone wait to Alex. He put on this con. <laughs> so angry. Um, do we have everything we need? Anyone need any drinks? Chips? Cookies? If no? You're okay, you're good, yes. Alex. I, I need a four horseman. Yes. Four. Dang it. Four. Four, 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 three, four. You can't drink. Uh, Women can't drink. You can't Wait, drink. Are you, are you calling me a woman? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, gaming? I should perhaps introduce the other people here as they might be marginally important. To my left, your right, is Garrett. He's one of my staff writers. To my right, your left, is Mark Seidel, one of my staff writers. To my far right, your far left, Dana Schwartz-Losey, aka The Mime. The, the new and improved Mime. We have an old one sitting over to the side. This model got improved. It's a little prettier looking. Dana is our jeweler slash merchandising director. She makes dice bags and jewelry and fun little knickknacks. And then to the far right is our loner mime, Cameron, aka Sixpence, from the traveling performing group Sixpence and Mr. Saturday. It used to be Mr. Saturday and Sixpence, but we recently changed it to reflect the more intelligent individuals. <laughs> Take it as you will. <laughs> Prove me right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sometimes they talk, that's why he's a defective one. <coughs> Sorry. We can talk today from anything from steampunk role playing to steampunk tabletop to steampunk card games. Note, that one won't last very long. <laughs> to steampunk video games, to steampunk... We could just talk about steampunk, but I think you'll get enough through the rest of the con. So is there any requests? Um, I will note our specialization is in role-playing games. Um, so if you want to request that one, that one's my favorite. Uh, if you want to request video games or something else, you know, these people can talk about that. I don't like video games. I think they're boring. Any requests? Come on, come on, give me one. Okay, you, what do you want to talk about? Are there any steampunk mods for existing board games? Ah, steampunk mods for existing board games. Looks like you want to answer. I do not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there... Hmm. Hey look, there's another mic. The mimes don't need it. Get off my mic. Do, do y'all know of any steampunk mods for games? I know you can probably find them online. Um, Just making my own count. Yeah, there's always making your own. That's pretty um, steampunk. Well, I don't remember exactly how steampunk it was, but I know there's Killing Dr. Lucky, which is Clue before the murder happened. Um, and then they also came out with an expansion to it called Saving Dr. Lucky, where you're trying to prevent the murder from ever happening. And then you can combine them and have people who are trying to keep him alive and people who are trying to kill him. Um, Which really steampunk cool. board games have we played? We have played Ticket to Ride. He has played that I have not. Um, are there any mods out for it? Not that I know of. Mm. There's expansions. Which are like mods. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> I guess if you just glue cogs to your pieces, that's like hey! mods. Hey! <laughs> the true steampunk community. <laughs> Absent the fact it's a gear. Whatever. There's... M, it, like in industry or empire. That's a cool steampunk board game. 
that looks a lot like, like uh, Catan, but I haven't mm -hmm. played it. It just I flipped it over and yeah, it looked like Catan with gears everywhere. So I was like, oh! <laughs> and that was about the extent of my board game foray. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Excellent. How about yourself? What would you like to learn about? Uh, there's a lot. That's where Ooh, I'm here. excellent. Ooh. Sweet. Um, considering I work for a company that what we do is we review video games and board games and the lovely card games, I kind of want to know what kind of other games there are. So you mentioned your game, of course, and the then best. two others, and for the board side of it, and then I kind of want to know the video side of it also. Oh, I was just strictly doing the like Monopoly style board game. You fold out the big hard cardboard thing and you roll dice. Uh, in terms of tabletop games, I know a few more. Well, she she is asking about video games. Okay. Um, let's see. What's 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 the more common video games nowadays? Bioshock, Skyrim. Ah, Bioshock is definitely Bioshock Three. Yeah. Is has that come out yet? It it's uh, pre-ordered. Just went available. Yes. Yeah, so Let's get ready to oh, wow. So, so steampunk it hurts. Flying cities in Colombia with drug cartel and trafficking and zeppelins and... Oh my! And and yes. automatons and yes. automatons. You know what I'm half oh, engineered eagles and no. robots. What about Fallout? What about Fallout? Like what about Fallout? Exactly. Fallout. 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 Fallout's diesel punk. We don't really like diesel. <laughs> really yeah. like I thought Fallout was Retro's Futurist. Yeah. And they were like... <laughs> Debatably, yes. That, that's actually what it would be. Stop so stepping on my core. All nuclear power. What it's called. There's oh. another uh, title in pre-production right now, which we've seen some trailers for, called Edge of Twilight. Uh, it looks like a third-person adventure title. Uh, looks to be primarily melee combat based. Uh, other than that, we don't really know a whole lot about it, besides the fact it's very dark, it's very dirty, and apparently the sun is always setting. Oh. Uh, so basically, uh, Dead Space on... Well, that yeah, sounds like it. The, the theory yeah. that I've gotten from it is that somehow they've like split the worlds between the daylight world and the nighttime world um, to a certain extent, like you know our world and then the spirit world, and then the main character lives in between. So he's on the edge of twilight. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. It, it, it has the most sweet trailer I've ever seen. It is a pretty sweet trailer. Um, yeah, if you, if you if you like trailers, which is what I like. Edge of Twilight, such a cool trailer. Yeah. Are there any other games? Um, oh, not, I know we've listed more. Yeah, we've redone that. We, we don't want to do that again. Final oh, Fantasy VI, that's yeah, what got a lot of people listed. That's not really up and coming. That's, that's, that's true. Um, well, has there anything come out recently that qualifies? Mm. The Dwarves of Skyrim. Yeah, I was about to say. That's, okay, the Dwarves of Skyrim are steampunk, yeah. yes. That's uh, clock punk. I'm sorry, that is clock punk. Da Vinci, not, not well. I think there might have been some expansions for WoW recently that were <laughs> steampunk. Yeah, they... I thought. Turned. I'm not actually sure. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, you always have the goblins and the gnomes in steampunk, or in, in, uh, in World of Warcraft that are advancing steampunk culture into World of Warcraft. Yes. You know, good for them. What, 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 what's the Russian MMO? Oh, uh... That's, uh, steampunk. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, it's got floating islands. Yes. Uh, the bears? It's half magic. It's, oh, uh, God, it's free to play. I made a character. I had Maple a Story game. had a steampunk expansion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which is actually kind of cool. They had three character classes, which were, like, Safari Hunter, where you, like, ride on the back of a panther and you have a crossbow and you do the whole, like, hit them. <laughs> yeah. And then they had, like, the, like, clock punk where you're, or I don't know what they called it, but, like, you're in a big old steampunk mech and you punch people. And then they had the steam mage, which had nothing to do with steampunk whatsoever. But they wore top hats, which is cool. Yeah, that counts. Yeah, that's... What is wearing a top hat, throwing magic, I guess it's a steampunk mage. You in the front row. Thank you. Uh... The steam mage. When you say it's not steampunk, did the steam mage actually like steam? Did not shoot steam. <laughs> it's a it's a mage that's good at melee fighting. It's a spell sword with a top hat. With a top hat, <laughs> or a or a six pence, <laughs> or a derby. So 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 why was he not steampunk? Uh oh. Because that was not his class equipment. His class equipment were robes and staves that had no gears on them. Anyone in here have a staff without any gear on it? Uh, I'm sorry, like a gnarled Gandalf staff. Oh, okay. Yeah, not not like a cane. 
That would have been cool. If he was like in a Victorian suit, yeah. he'd like, shoot lightning out of a cane. Yeah. I'd that like, would be really cool. I would like I mean, that. steampunk mage. That'd be really that, neat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wait, well, we, we could give it a really cool, like, a cult twinge to it, you know, really go 1800s and oh, be yeah. like, you know, I am harnessing the evil powers. You know, something fun. Something fun. Yes. And they no didn't powers do that. Fun. They, you know, <laughs> the cousin twice removed of Merlin. Yes. Great. The steampunk Merlin. I like it. I like it. That Russian game mentioned earlier, all I can remember is that it, it is an MMO <laughs> and it starts with a V. And that's Vindictus. Not start with a V. No, no, no it's not, not start with a V. Uh, we will remember the name before the end of the panel. Probably. Probably, Probably not. No. Uh, no. <laughs> I had the whole tenant stopped. What else do you guys want? Tabletop keys. Oh, tabletop keys. Let's go. Well, there's okay. Tefra, which is the best, but there's some other not as good ones. Um, there's Victoriana. Which Fine. recently got uh, the Abney Park. Abney Park came out with a Victoriana book. Yeah. Where is that one based out of? Is it based out of Texas? When Vic they made out of Victoriana? Victoriana? I don't know where they're based. Uh, Victoriana is made by Cubicle Seven, which is over in the UK. Oh. Um, Victoriana is probably the biggest and most well-known steampunk role-playing game. Um, right now. I say that based. Do what? Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Until next year. Until next year. Uh, yeah, and as they were about to say, they've recently, um, they licensed the material from Abney Park, you know, one of our big steampunk bands, um, and they recently came out with Airship Pirates, an expansion to the Victoriana game that is entirely based on the Abney Park lore and literature, uh, dealing with neo-Bedouins and flying sky pirates. It's, uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, There's one. still Bedouins around. I know, I know. It's weird to call them new Bedouins. They never stopped being <laughs> just regular Bedouins. <laughs> and that bothers some people. Like mimes. <laughs> there's also... Uh, mimes aren't people. There's also Air, the aerial steampunk <laughs> RPG. No, and, and that's true. Um, I believe that's a video game, though. Is it, is it, I, the goal of Air is to become a uh, full MMO. Oh, I did not know that. Uh, there's... Space 18. I don't know. I can remember. I, I knew it up until you did that. Space 1886. 89. I agree. That's an older tabletop steampunk game, and there's also Castle Falkenstein. Steampunk Castle Falkenstein game. is the classic. If you are looking for the the original steampunk tabletop role playing game, Castle Falkenstein. It sounds like Frankenstein. It's Falkenstein. Uh, you can occasionally find books of it, uh, you can search for PDFs of it online. Like, I, I just get really excited when I look at it, because all the arts in like, sepia tone, and, or, or sepia tone, whatever. Um, I only see black and white. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, it's so steampunk, it hurts. You know, the, the, the giant flying machines, and everything's based off like, Wellsian and Vernian technologies. That makes me really happy. And then there's other tabletop games that are set in Victorian ages that you can do whatever you want with. Like, there's Vampire... Yeah, Vampire... Uh, Vampire the... Was it Requiem or Masquerade? Yeah, it was Masquerade when they did it. Masquerade came out with a, a steampunk expansion. Well, a Victorian... Victorian, Victorian expansion. Which you can just throw into sci-fi, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. But, I mean, you know, Mas uh, Requiem has the 1980s expansion. Oh, that's right. 1980s? Is that 1980s? Like no, I was, I was, I was, I guess. I would always picture 80s is when like Sarah. It's like spaghetti strap punk. <laughs> spaghetti strap punk. Leg warmer punk. Yeah. Uh -huh. The leg warmers on my gun, so now it's like. <laughs> Shit. Now it's more powerful. Can, can y'all in the back hear the mime when he talks? Sure. That's no. unfortunate. <laughs> you said you wanted me on this panel to talk, and I was. I like, did not say I wanted you on here to talk. Oh. oh. I should have probably sound. <laughs> uh, if you're fans of the uh, Pathfinder role-playing game, there you go. with with their recent expansions uh, in the Ultimate Warrior and the Ultimate Magic, they introduced yeah. a lot of steampunk elements mixed with their particular brand of fantasy. Like, uh, there's an airship which is a blue dragon strapped to a zeppelin. Yeah. <laughs> nice. The engine is the zeppelin, the vehicle is the blue dragon, yeah. and it's all alchemic. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> That's awesome, though. Yeah, no, it, it is totally awesome, but God help me, I don't even know how to fly that thing. And then there's the gunslinger class, which, you know, like, they, they're, 
gunslingers, and then there's the, the spell slinger class, mm -hmm. which you can kind of make steampunk if you want. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, they have magical guns that shoot spells. You can shoot someone to heal them, which is weird. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. It, it's some pretty neat stuff. It's it's seen a large upswing lately with the entire rise of the movement itself. These last couple of years, you're seeing more and more steampunk elements thrown into thrown into everything, games. especially especially video games in forms of digital media. Yeah. Um, well, in everywhere, actually. Um, and just briefly, to go over card games, there's Mad Dirigible, was it? Mad no, 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 no. Dirigible? Um, Zeppelin. Ze Ze Zeppelin, uh, Zeppelin Armada. Zeppelin Armada. The one that we played at Aether Fest. No. No. <laughs> Not the one I'm thinking of. Okay. Um, um, there, there was, it was like Mad Dirigible, and it was a really cool card game where you play as ambassadors from different countries who stole, like, snuck onto Queen Victoria's airship, and you're just grabbing cargo off the airship and throwing it off the edge. Because it's just... So you, but you get like these weird like spy abilities to sabotage other people who are trying to throw stuff off, and help yourself throw more stuff off, and... So you want to throw all the stuff. I still want to play that. But you're, you're throwing it down to people. Oh, I thought you were just like... Just oh, oh. It, it's well, all you're just destroying uh, stuff. No, you're, 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 you're 30,000 feet in the air throwing cargo down to people on the ground who catch the great crate and then that walk away with safe. it. That's this very steampunk. It's so steampunk. I got cogs in my legs. I can catch it. <laughs> <laughs> and then his arms fall off. Yeah. He didn't get that upgrade. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Are they wooden boxes? No. Yes, no. they're wooden boxes. Full of heavy things. Okay, but it's a card game. It's a card game. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's not real life. It's not real life. Yeah, if you have an airship, do not throw things <laughs> off of it to other people. Not 30,000 feet up in the air. At least not 30,000 feet up in the air. You need a pressurized cabin for that. You should not be throwing... You shouldn't be throwing things off the edge. Don't throw science in the steam. You, technically, you can. It's called drop. Doing a drop, and it has usually a parachute that attached to it. Parachutes? Oh, yeah. We don't use parachutes. The cards so with pictures of the crates don't have throw parachutes on them. Throw it out of the B-52. That's no diesel cards. Yeah. Parachutes. What? Oh, yeah. I took a metal piece of sheet of brass. That's kind of strange. I spent over. You can always put a glider on it. Be a little bit more steampunk. That's copper. Another thing to look out for if you if you're the type of person who wants to look for you know new things coming out and keep track of the industry, there is a new game coming out soon called uh, Zeppelin Armada, which is being created by Evil Hat Games. Zeppelin Armada is a card game that pits your Zeppelin Armada against their Zeppelin Armada, and I haven't seen it played. But all the reviews that are coming in are just phenomenal, and having glimpsed of just a little bit of the art, like I'm, I think it's going to be a really neat card game. Like magic, sort of. I, I I think like the the basic premise is magic like. You know, you have your deck, they have their deck, <coughs> and you're laying out cards versus their cards. And I don't know if it's going to be a collectible card game or simply you know a non-collectible card game, which is the opposite. But. <laughs> Um, I'm, thinking, I'm, oh, go ahead. I'm thinking double headed, triple headed dragons and actually doing mm -hmm. actual teams. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. True airships doing teams. Yeah, you know, we can play the, the English versus the French versus the Germans. Yeah. The Germans win. Not all the time. <laughs> Eventually they lose. Yeah. Except Eventually. Well. It takes you know, four to six years. Another great non-collectible card game that has a lot of steampunk art on the cards is Gloom, which is a game where you have your family, and your goal is to make them as miserable as possible, and then kill them. Oh, right. It is so funny. <laughs> and your goal is to make sure that everyone else's families are as happy as possible and stay alive as long as they can, so you can make yours more miserable, and then kill them. And so your... You have cards, it's like you give the other team, like, you know, had a nice walk in the park, you know, plus like five happiness, and then you have like, ate a bad sandwich, fell down the stairs, oh, and then they died. And then you tally everything up, and then whoever was the most miserable wins. We so got so good. So if you have a bad sandwich today, you're probably going to die. <laughs> yes. Well, and the yes. cards are see-through, so they stack, and it'll cover up certain points. And it'll cover up certain points, and then like, or give you more points, and so you have like the stack, like this thick, and you're 
you have only like three spots. Yeah, so you so can... it's really easy to keep track of the amount of points that you have. It's nice. Cool. And Good. they have a couple expansions out for it, and they remade Gloom recently for you Lovecraft fans. They made a Cthulhu edition. Oh. And I, if you're not a Lovecraft fan, or like don't know Lovecraft that well, you open it up and it's like, these would be funny if I knew what any of these words were. <laughs> and I can't even like, go to my like Lovecraft fan friends and be like, what's a Because I can't pronounce them either. This guy will wear so many consonants. <laughs> it's very neat. <laughs> I, I definitely suggest it. Yeah, Gloom was one of those when I first heard about it, I was like, <sighs> and then like I sat down and I played it, and that was that was the end of it. I, I it's so good. And they went off and bought like the eight expansions as soon as they got There's it. There's three expansions. We own two of them. <laughs> two and a half. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It can yeah. be. Um, yeah. There's yeah. nothing really. It, it, it's it's not like raunchy or vulgar. It's just that the premise is a little dry. You're there to kill um, off your family. Yeah. 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 You're, you're, it's not like they got eviscerated. It depends on the yeah. tininess of your family. Yeah. Killer Bunnies is a family-friendly game. If Killer Bunnies is a family-friendly game, then yes, Gloom is perfectly <laughs> family-friendly. Okay. Um, yeah. Nowadays. Family friendly has a wide range. Yeah. <laughs> Kids are weird. The other, the, the thing that I most appreciate about Gloom is Gloom encourages you to tell a story with it, where you know you can just sit down and play the cards and just say you know oh he goes for a walk and you know it's a bad walk he gets negative ten points, but you can also sit down and I've watched them do it and it's so funny is that Dana will sit over here and, and tell me an interesting story about how they went on a bad walk and they tripped over a you know, loose branch into a beehive and it was horrible and atrocious and negative 10 points. And then they find a puppy and bring it home. Aww. Aww. Damn the it. <laughs> they named the puppy Reginald. And then they die. Uh, <laughs> of, of rabies, yes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> other tabletop games which are not RPGs but to are to an extent uh, War Machine. Oh, uh, how do I forget about War Machine? The War big machine one in the room. War Machine is a miniature uh, tabletop war gaming. Um, it has like some really, really, really neat models. Bring your money. <laughs> It, it, if you've ever done a Warhammer 40k or normal Warhammer Fantasy, uh, people typically tell me that the cost to get into War Machine is less. It's a little cheaper to get into, uh, but the per miniature cost is a little higher. So something to note. Yeah, effectively, Warhammer armies are larger. Like War Machine, your army's smaller, but they're all metal. You don't need as many. They've actually just moved over to plastics. Yeah, so I think they're going to become a little cheaper. Oh, awesome. Or stay the same price and be less quality. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. But that game is so neat. The art alone, like if you are into steampunk themed art, just go by the books and just look at the art. So, so good. And, and, and sometimes like if you go through some of the arts, like, oh, these are like crusaders that like tripped over steampunk. But it's still... <laughs> crazy beautiful, so it doesn't really matter. Now before we go uh, too far away, you know, we, we, we could talk about our product, which, you know, not, not to do any self-promotion or anything, but Tefra, who's heard of Tefra? <laughs> Sweet, I have today. You've never heard of Tefra? Oh, weird. Well, we'll have to show it to you later. Okay. Tefra is a steampunk tabletop role-playing game that we are developing. Um, we have a Kickstarter up currently. If you ever heard of Kickstarter, it's a cool little like way for us to raise money to get our um, book into print, into production, and into retail stores. Uh, we, uh, our goal was $1,000, and our first day we hit $1,600, and we're currently sitting at $8,000. It's pretty awesome. We're only halfway done. Yeah. <laughs> But you can go onto our Kickstarter, pre-order the final copy. Um, it's it's only you only have to pledge thirty dollars in order to get our final book, which will sell for about forty. So it's a good deal if you're thinking about doing it. 
that a little bit aside, uh, Tefra is unique because it's set in an alternate world. Um, we've kind of changed up some of the races and made everything just a little different. Uh, the other fun thing, go for it. We wanted to make a completely open uh, character creation system. We pride ourselves on having a very fast character creation system. Most people who sit down to play can create their own characters within 30 minutes. They feel highly customized, they feel unique, and they feel excited. We also are really excited about our crafting system. You know, everyone wants to be a mad scientist or a crafter, and you know, keep looking at games where you, know, you can be the marksman or you can be the mad scientist. We wanted to combine them both. We want you to build your gun and shoot it too. Anything else to add to that, Mark? Um, what flavor of steampunk did you draw on to generate this? Ooh, the best There's flavors. So There's a long history So I'm assuming one. you skipped over diesel. Because you said you didn't like it. I love diesel punk. I, I don't like it. him. He doesn't like me. Um, <laughs> I don't like diesel punk either, actually. I actually diesel. like diesel punk, but I have to give him crap about it to keep him up. Uh, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we had an expansion coming out, and he was like, what's with the pompadours and the fedoras? I'm like, is there gasoline in this city? I was like, maybe. Where's the coal? Uh. <laughs> um, <laughs> you laugh, but it happened. Uh, almost exactly like that. Almost exactly like that. Um, I love diesel punk. I'm one of those people who's very big on the fact that the dieselpunk community did not spin off of the steampunk community, like a lot of people think. The okay. dieselpunk community has been around for years. They just recently took the name dieselpunk because Atomic Cafe was a weird name for a subgenre. <laughs> and all, the dieselpunks all got together and were like, well, there's steampunk and cyberpunk. Mmm, dieselpunk. And so I, I don't really see them as like a two headed hydra. Or, I don't know. Um, bad hydra, phrase. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I guess the two-headed hydra is really lame. Where's your third head? But uh, we do we do not have diesel punk in the core book. Um, but we we did uh, in terms of the steampunk aspect, we we did try to do the more utopian steampunk again, at least for our our main nation that the the book the our core book takes place in. Um, you know, so not the like, oh, we're grungy and everyone's dying, and uh, but the like, oh my god, I'm freaking rich, I'm a noble, I'm gonna go adventure because I have all this money and I don't have to work for a living. It, it, or the peasant who's like, I'm gonna go out and get fame and glory, and I'm going to be hailed as a hero, and I'll get tons of money and make my fame and fortune. Where it's not like, I have to do this to survive. It's a, I'm gonna adventure, because adventuring's awesome. Diesel tortillas. <laughs> it's the high industrial, high steampunk, um, where there's tons of mad scientists, there's tons of crazy gadgets, you can get automatons, you know, walking around with you of all shapes, sizes, intelligences, and not intelligences, you can get um, weapons, there's different creatures, there's abominations, I can point my gun at my friend and make sure that he gets a new third eye, you know, it's all sorts of crazy, wacky things that are possible, perhaps not always common, but are definitely possible. Uh, again, like you mentioned earlier, we're really proud of our crafting system. We make it really easy, really quick to get into. Uh, and you can build just about anything. I mean, you can make a flaming chainsaw sword, a uh, suit of armor that sprays steam in, in the eyes of anyone who's trying to attack you, um, you know, a, a giant airship that I, I, I don't know what crazy things you can build. You can build a giant there. airship. You can build a giant airship, and that's awesome. That shoots automatons. And I have done that. Um, I definitely had a gun that shot automatons that, like, Megatron style turned into guns that shot more automatons that were just bullets. That would, like, hit you and then they, like, crawl <coughs> at your mouth. Um, so this is an open, open crafting system. Yes. No it's, it's, and... it's not open, per se, but there's so many options. It's practically open. It's practically open. Um, and we also, like, like he mentioned briefly, uh, we also have genetic modifications that you can do both to your friends in your downtime or your enemies in any time you want. Um, 
you know, it's a little bit easier to screw up someone's DNA than properly help them out. <laughs> so it's it's kind of fun to just be like, ha ha, and stab something, uh, you know, stab a vial into a guy, and, just, oh, and then his body just turns to primordial ooze. Oh, that's cool too. That's still <laughs> awesome. Well, and then we have course, acids. That yeah, works. That's true. Uh, we also have a, a chemical crafting, so you can make medicines, acids, poisonous gases, because, you know, World War One's very steampunk. Um, <laughs> no trench warfare. Right? No trench warfare. Um, <coughs> bombs. 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 And of course we have the wacky steampunk gadgets. Um, if you want to play steampunk Batman, we want to make it available to you. Uh, I mean, we have the more, the more practical gadgets, like, oh, you have a grappling hook, or you have, like, a water filter, um, you know, you have a portable bridge, you know, it's like a rolled up thing, you crank it, and a little bridge comes out. So, oh. laughing gas from the Joker? Definitely, that would be under a chemical crafting. Balls. Totally. Mm -hmm. And, or you can go with the more wacky, esoteric gadgets, like a portable door. And it's not... Magical, so you don't like stick it against a wall and then you can open it up and go through the wall. It's just a door frame that you can carry with you and just like set it up someplace. Or what you can do is if you're running down a hallway and someone's chasing you, just turn around, put a door, and then lock it. <laughs> and there's like, I don't remember there being a door here. Click, click, click. The hell? Oh, you got the key? Yeah, I'm like, uh. uh I guess he didn't go this way, and then turn around and leave. <laughs> um, you know, we have a suitcase that a drill comes out of. You can just grab that and drill through walls. Mark's very proud of his trinket system. It's, it's what I do. On that note, why did you steer away from the magic system? <laughs> huh. um, well, people who know about our old magic system. Nah. Uh, <laughs> we wanted to go through the aspect that uh, steampunk, from a literary perspective, is often treated as science fiction with a Victorian aesthetic, and it's a little bit hard to get that science fiction feeling in a game where the core book has magic in it. The other thing, uh, I don't know if any of y'all read Girl Genius, but you know, any uh, significantly advanced science is indistinguishable from magic. So we realized that everything that you could do with our magic system, we can just turn into explosives and trinkets and automatons and... You know, now we have a cool steampunk setting. So the core conflict is adventures? Is there enemies? There are plenty of enemies, which is why the profession of adventuring isn't just something those crazy eccentric people do. You know, a lot of people who seriously want to protect their loved ones will go out and become adventurers. You know, again, mad scientists are kind of a problem. Um, because a lot of the scientists are eccentric and they'll just be like, I made a monster! And he didn't turn out the way I wanted. There's the door! And that monster will just like, walk out and start killing people. It's like a Russian a python. Yeah, it's, it's, that, and that's not socially acceptable in Victorian society. You just go around and murder people if you're a Frankenstein monster. You have to challenge them to a duel. You have to challenge them to a duel. It has to be gentlemanly. And you can't just start chopping off heads with your crab claw. And uh, so th th that's a really big problem. Um, There's airship pirates. airship pirates are also an issue. If you want to be an airship pirate, rival airship pirates. Or the military. Or, or the, the military. military. Or there's also, our world is so fractitious. We are uh, only exploring the one country with the core book release. This one country just absorbs about half the land mass from the nine other countries surrounding it. There's so much political tension and so much potential for this escalating warfare that it's, it's kind of obscene. At the end of the day, bad science is back here in the background. Okay, you know, that's, uh, that, that's awkward. That's like an episode of CSI. Eight, eight separate countries over here. Every cannon pointing at your borders. And of course, you know, when we say mad scientists, we don't just mean, you know, I'm a tiny gnome in my laboratory making evil robots that are gnome-sized. I mean, they're going to be those mad scientists, and they're going to be the mad scientists who are like, I made 180-foot-tall automatons that are fueled by eating houses. Um, well, which actually brings up a great one of our other enemies that we're going to be releasing soon, which is the salvagers. Woo. We're created, you know, 
know, like a century ago, um, and they're slowly like replicating because they just go along and anything that looks useful, they assimilate. And once they get too large, they split into two more salvagers. Um, and one of the issues with the salvagers is their computing is 100 years old, and computing wasn't exactly very advanced back then, so it ends up with a bunch of glitches and viruses. So you end up with salvagers who are like, flesh, that's a usable type of metal, right? Um, or you'll have the salvagers that forget to separate when they get too large. And so they, they just keep getting, getting larger. larger. Or there's those guys like, hey, that's useful. And it's actually full armor plating on some poor Joe Schmo who's just running around the city. He gets eaten. Sucks. Um, and of course, you also have the salvagers that will end up eating an automaton that has artificial intelligence in it. And their system will invade that system with viruses, so they'll end up with an incredibly intelligent thing obsessed with eating other technology. I'm going to use this question as a segue now to another topic that I love. Um, you know, when we talk about like fantasy gaming, so often we think of, okay, we're going to go dungeon crawling, or we're going to, you know, traverse into the cave of the dragon and, you know, make our way down through the cave, or, you know, oh, there's a great mausoleum over here, and undead monsters are creeping out, so we're going to go into the mausoleum. All those locations are fairly static. They're not that interesting to me. What I think is so great about steampunk is that the majority of your adventures are going to take place aboard an airship thousands of feet above the ground, or on a train that's speeding at 60 miles an hour across the countryside with bandits chasing behind you, or in a dark, dank city full of, you know, criminals and, you know, corrupt police, and who knows what else. If any of you have seen um, Gangs of New York, mm -hmm. I think that's just a fantastic setting for an adventure to take place. Uh, one thing I suggest to you people in the audience who run games, um, one of the most interesting things you can ever do with a role-playing game party is say, you get on the train, you take your seats, the train pulls off, a few hours into your voyage, there's nothing around you but countryside, what do you do? And just, just stop talking. <laughs> Someone will die. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, oh my god, train bandits are coming, I'm sure of it. He wouldn't just leave us on a train, because that makes sense. There's no such thing as a peaceful train ride when you're an adventurer. There are people with guns on this train, and then you realize that they're the ones with the guns. And, you know, I've had, you know, people run in and start messing with conductors, shoot out windows to impress ladies, because that's what the ladies like. You know, like, oh, this employee's only door is locked. They must be hiding something evil inside. The lock picket is just like a couple guys getting coffee. They're like, must be evil coffee. Nothing just they... with a party more than a locked cargo train. Like, <laughs> nothing. Why would they want to lock on this? It's parcels, it's packages. They're just like, we have to get in! <laughs> Let's get on top of the train! You will see your party at, at their worst. Like, that's the greatest way to judge a new party is... You, know, you need to know what sort of bad behavior they're going to get into. The most lawful good character will go evil in a second if you leave them on a train. The other aspect of that is that once the train stops, you can also inform them that there are in fact laws in a Victorian society. Laws that have to be obeyed, otherwise you know, bad things happen to you. Players cry when they go to jail, it's hysterical. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, sorry, you guys were mentioning trains. Um, I played a session with uh, Alex where we were on a train, and he decided to jump on top of the train and pull his parachute off. <laughs> <laughs> and then there are people who do stuff like that. At the end Did of he keep playing? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, because they, there were guys trying to rob the train, and he, he, this was back when you guys had mutations, and he rolled creeping insanity. So he would just do shit randomly. <laughs> so he jumped on top of the train, pulled the parachute, and... And he fell off and started chasing the train. <laughs> By the end of the day, we sold the end of the train. <laughs> Again, the most lawful yeah, good party will turn to train bandits if you don't throw train bandits on the boulder. <laughs> it must be train bandits. I guess it's us. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've started out like train bandits are going to attack, but I'll give them ten minutes of roleplay before that happens. And they end up being train bandits, and I'm like, well, taking these sets for train bandits and making them train guards. <laughs>